Today's message is called Stop. The reason it's called Stop is because God brought it to my attention that I need to slow down or stop for just a little bit of time. Um, all my life I've seen the expression, be still and know that I am the Lord. Those words have been in front of my face for as long as I can remember. Why? Because I am restless and I'm running myself in circles. I never seem to have enough time or energy to be super mom. My thinking process is like a hyperactive kangaroo. I am disorganized and full of clutter. I can't focus, set goals, and delegate responsibilities. I'm not prioritized and organized. I feel like everyone runs over the top of me, but it would help if I did one thing, stop. It would also help if I asked for help from my family and from my kids and from my friends, but I'm too, but I'm too proud to admit that I'm exhausted. It's pretty bad when God tells you to slow down. I know it's for my own benefit, but how am I to get everything done? Step one, stop worrying about what everyone wants me to do. Step two, just say no. I can't do all things for all people all the time. Step three, stop worrying. God told me that if there was such a thing as a professional worry, worry ward, I'd be very rich. He said I'd be the best in the profession, in fact. Matthew 6.27 Of whom you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life. I'm always worrying about disappointing people if I don't volunteer to do things for my family and friends. Sometimes I feel like they expect and need me to help them. I can hardly help myself, but I try to help others. Are they getting the full benefit of my assistance? No. I am robbing them by spreading myself thin. Did I ever consider that other people can assist my family and friends better than I could? No. In the Bible, a similar situation is encountered in Luke chapter 10, verses 40 through 42. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. With all the technology and various distractions, what is one to do? Detox. Go to a quiet room and get away from all the noise. Schedule me time, if possible. Get plenty of rest and stop trying to use caffeine as a vice to get by. Perhaps we live in a world where people think that it is selfish not to serve others. There is a difference, though, between servitude and slavery. There are many definitions for servant, service, and s serve and service. I think society, though, has confused the true definition of these words. Servant has three definitions in Webster's Dictionary, but definition number three is most correct. It says a person who works earnestly for a cause. Serve has many def definitions, too. The two best ones for the topic are to do service for, aid, help, and to give reverence to God. Service has many definitions, too. The best is an act of assistance. Do you think that Jesus would want us to put ourselves in bondage after he died for our sins? Do you think Jesus would want us to be in slavery? Why would he free us only to be in the condition of being a slave? Bondage. Why would Jesus want us to participate in hard work or toil? Drudgery. Yes, we have to be a part of the spiritual process and perform good works. Yes, anything worth working for is through hard work. But there is a difference between being ran through the ringer and providing proper servitude. When you are ran through the ringer, you are cheating others and yourself. You are not honoring the temple of God, which is you. 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit lives in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, he will destroy him, for God's temple is sacred and you are that temple. Do you think that Jesus would want you to self-destruct when he has so much love for you? 
Are you doing anyone a favor or are you one of those individuals who do good works to only complain about them later? It should be a privilege to serve, not a burden that one bears to make themselves more prideful or to add extra lines to their resume. Servitude should be done from the humbleness of one's heart. Servitude should be done out of love for others. True servitude should be a benefit to the giver and receiver, not a burden. John 13, 4 through 10 talks about Jesus washing the disciples' feet. Why would he do that? He did it out of love. He did it so we would be beneficiaries of the gift he gave. He also did this so we would learn by his example of what true hospitality is. In Timothy, the first book of Timothy, chapter 5, it talks about hospitality. It says not to rebuke an older man harshly, but to exhort him as if he were your father. Treat younger men as brothers and older women as mothers and younger women as sisters with absolute purity. Give proper recognition to widows who are really in need. If the widow has children or grandchildren, they should learn first of all to put their religion into practice by caring for their own family. This is pleasing to God. It is not pleasing to God to bring the temple of God into rubble, to destroy the very foundation it was built on. Jesus died to save us, so not so we could destroy ourselves. Otherwise, he labored in vain, and he died for nothing. John 3, 16 and 17. For God... So loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. If we forget why he died, we forget everything. Dear Jesus, I pray today for all those mothers that are working extra hard, or fathers that are working extra hard, or any relatives, friends, or family, that they not forget about truly treating themselves good also. That they see that it is damaging when they run themselves ragged, then they get upset and annoyed with everyone else around them, and then that doesn't benefit others that they are serving. Please help them stop and recognize these warning signs, these red flags, for I did not fully recognize them either. I was tired. Then I started stress eating. Then I started trying to use coffee and gum to stay awake and do the labors of love, do the labors of God. But God is upset with me because I did not take time to show true commitment to Him by honoring His temple and taking care of what is His, which is me. And it doesn't help others when I don't do the same. Because then I send out like some kind of toxic energy that isn't good for everyone else. So please help heal us and forgive us of our sins, O oh Lord Jesus. And help us be received into the kingdom of heaven as a whole, pure, true, living sacrifice that humbles themselves unto you. For you first showed us this example through your love. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.